Hello, Rushing Wind, friends, family, loved ones, Antelope Valley, Indiana, Kokomo, Florida, New Jersey, wherever you're listening from. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining. I'll give you guys a few seconds to to get on here and uh, and and join our devotional. And I want to thank Pastor for this opportunity. A couple of weeks ago, I told my wife I had had a dream that Pastor had asked me to give a devotional on him. I wasn't looking forward to doing a devotional. I didn't ask to do a devotional. I just had this dream that I spoke on giving. And uh, a couple nights ago, Pastor texted me and said to get a couple videos together to um, to contribute to our devotionals in the morning, which I've been enjoying. I hope everybody's been enjoying the devotionals. They've been great. Uh, it's been exciting to hear the different people speaking and the different perspectives on how they're dealing with the pandemic and the shutdown and everything. But I just want to say thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity to share my testimony and to share what God has laid on my heart. And uh, I don't think it was a coincidence. I uh, I believe the scripture says uh, that your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So I guess I'm qualified to be old because I had a lot of dreams over the last five years that I believe God has given me and that have come to fruition. So tonight I want to talk about uh, pandemic giving versus prepper giving. Everybody knows what this pandemic has done to us. And if you don't know what a prepper is, a prepper is somebody who reads books and studies what they need to do in case something crazy happens and they need to shut themselves in and lock themselves down and have enough food, you know, back in the, 60s and 70s when there was fear of nuclear war you know people were building bunkers and stocking it full and getting ready those were they they were called preppers and and uh there's still some of them out there now and so i'm going to put a little different spin on a prepper giving versus uh pandemic giving uh, but i wanted to talk to you a little bit about um my you know my experience with giving i've been an unfaithful giver in the past i don't know if any of you have been an unfaithful giver, just uh, raise your hand. I got both of mine raised. I've had oppor uh, opportunities to give and I didn't give. And I can remember a time in 1993 when I had a 1983 Pontiac Sunbird with 63,000 miles on it. I'll never forget it. I had the tithe and offering in my pocket, but I also in my head was saying if I give this, I won't have diaper money. I won't have formula money. I have a newborn child and one on the way. And I withheld from God. And the scripture says in Malachi 3.10, 3, 8, 9, and 10, you can read the scriptures. It's bringing all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me herewith. He, challenge, he gives us an opportunity to challenge him. Saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing wherein you can... You can't contain it. There shall not be room enough to receive it. And so I remember this particular instance where I didn't give. And as a result, I woke up the next morning. And you can say what you want, but in my heart, God knows that I knew what was right. The scripture says, he that knoweth to do right and doeth it not to him, is it is sin. So in my heart, I had sinned against God. And I immediately... Got up the next morning, I started my car, and the transmission went out. And I immediately repented. And I said, God, I'm so sorry. I know this is a result of my disobedience and my unfaithfulness. And God, I don't care if it takes me six weeks to fix this car. I'm going to pay back my tithe, and I'm going to be faithful from here out. I promise, Lord, I, I don't want to. I made a commitment with God. I don't want to be unfaithful. And so... Put the car in, it cost exactly 10 times what it would have cost to pay my tithe. That transmission cost me 10 times more than what my tithe and offering was. I don't know if it was a coincidence, if there's some significance. I just remembered that that was the amount. I didn't expect, I didn't ask anybody for help. I didn't put my hand out. I didn't, I just said, I know what I got to do. This is my problem. I created this, but I'm going to, I'm going to fix it. So I prepared to get a ride to work for the next several weeks until I could pay for the transmission, get my car back. And that Thursday night at church, Thursday night Bible study, the elderly man in the church walked up and he shook my hand and I could feel something in his hand. 
I immediately, as a man, I'm like, whoa, I, I didn't ask for your help. I don't, I can get through this. I don't need your help. And he leaned in. I just basically said, brother, I, I can't do, I can't take this. I can't accept this. He said, if you don't take this, you are robbing me of a blessing. Do you really want that on your head? And I repented again. I said, I'm sorry, brother. I, I don't want to rob you of a blessing and thank you. And I pray a hundredfold blessing on you. And so I took the money. I went home. It was actually a check for enough to cover my car and enough to get two weeks worth of groceries and formula. And it was an incredible blessing that I didn't feel I deserved. But that's the kind of God we serve, a God that is loving and cares for his children and would do anything for them. So when we look at scripture, which is our, it's our source of direction and life and, and our guidebook. And when we look in, Malachi 3.10, and we read Malachi 3, 8, 9, and 10, and 11. Uh, we learn about what God says. He challenged challenge me. Prove me herewith if I will not bless you. But in that scripture, it doesn't say financially. Too often we think that if we give, God's going to bless us financially. And sometimes we do it for the wrong reason. But I can tell you that it's not always financial. I challenge people all the time. Uh, those of you that have been through my starting point classes when I taught those, I would challenge you for a year, just one year, give faithfully in your tithing and write down today what your income is, what your marriage is like, what your children are like, what your job is like, what your house is like. Write down your life. And you don't have to show it to me. But in one year, show me your tithing uh, contributions and show me your tax returns. And show me that you gave 10%. And if God hasn't blessed your life and you've given faithfully, I'll pay your tithing for the rest of your life. Because I know God will honor his word. I had one uh, student in my class who, who confessed and said, you know, I've never really understood the concept of giving and have not been faithful. And I said, I'll tell you what, I challenge you. Try this. But don't expect monetary blessing just expect god to bless your life and sure enough within two weeks two of his sons got the holy ghost his housing situation improved exponentially his job gave him i think he actually had a job transfer that was way more money than what he was making uh before and so don't just read the scripture to think that oh if i give god's gonna give me money back no god's gonna bless your life for being faithful it's all about being faithful um, 2 Corinthians 9, 7, Paul says, Every man, according as he purposeth, purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And that's an addressing the heart. What's your heart like when you're giving? What is the intent of your heart? Why do you give? Ask God to give you a giving heart, like you want to give for a good reason. Because when you give to the church, the church can give to others. And when we don't give, we prevent the church from helping others. So we're really not only robbing God, we're robbing the church of many blessings. Uh, Mark, or I'm sorry, Matt, Matthew 6, 19 through 21 said, Lay up for yourselves treasures, not up on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves can break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and thieves cannot break through or steal. For where your heart, treasure is, there will your heart be also. Ask yourself, where is my treasure. What is my treasure? What do I value more than anything? Is it my family? Is it my uh, my house, my car, my boat, my truck? What do I treasure more than anything? What will get me more upset if you violate one of those things? And it should be the house of God or the kingdom of God and your walk with God. That should be where your treasure is. And so Ask yourself, um, what do I need to do to get that kind of heart? God, give me a giving heart. When you're praying, ask him, Lord, give me a heart to give. Give me a heart to bless others. Uh, Luke 8, 6, 38, I think it was, said, Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall, and running over, I think, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. He's saying, I'm going to bless you beyond measure. Running over shall other men give unto your bosom. Who are those other men? Your boss, your company that you work for, people that 
uh, you come in contact with on a regular basis. God's going to bless you from areas that you never expected. And so when we look at giving, we look at um, being faithful, not just with giving, but with our time and our talent and our treasure. When you're faithful in all of those things, God's going to move in and he's going to take care of you. And you have to believe that. You have to go into giving of all those things, time, talent, treasure, with the heart that I want to be faithful. And I know if I'm faithful, I got nothing to worry about. God is going to take care of me. You know, back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, we had televangelism, which now everybody's a televangelist because of the virus. You're either on your telephone or your television, you're watching service. But televangelists kind of took people away from giving because they were, you know, raising $300 million to buy a plane or, or you know, whatever. Wearing these big diamonds, big hair, all this makeup, uh, big churches, whatever. So a lot of people got away from giving because they felt um, offended by the church world because all they asked for was money. And so when people come to church after being gone for 15, 20 years and they hear one thing about giving, they're like, oh my gosh, every, that's all they ever talk about. You know what? No pastor wants to pastor a cursed church. Every pastor wants to cur uh, pastor a blessed church. Your pastor wants to see you blessed and he knows in order to do that, you have to be faithful in your attendance, in your giving, in your commitment to the work of God. Because the kingdom of God needs your help. It needs your finances in order to survive. It needs your time. It needs you in position to teach Sunday school, to be a youth leader, to be a youth director, to be a connect group uh, coordinator or leader or, or some aspect of your life needs to be faithful to the house of God. And so um, Malachi, when he spoke in, in chapter 3, he did not call the blessing a financial blessing. The blessing can be many things. He said, see if I'm going to pour out a blessing. Uh, Paul addressed the heart in 2 Corinthians and told us to get our hearts right first, which I talked about. Pray, God, make my heart right. I want a right heart. And in Matthew, Jesus instructed us to be careful what we treasure because it could affect the condition of our heart. I want my heart right with God above all things. And if being faithful in my time and talent and treasure um, will get me in with God and and let, let, let me know that God's got my back and he'll take care of me when trouble comes, then I want to be faithful. I want him on my team. I don't want him working against me because he's got all power. He's all, he's everything. And so I want him on my team. And then Luke, Jesus also let us know that you cannot keep up with his giving. You can't compete with his giving. It's not a math you can understand. It's worse than common core. It doesn't make sense. And so when you put God to the test, don't expect to try and understand when he gives back to you because you can't make sense of it. So when there's different types of givers, I think of pandemic givers, which is what I want to talk about today. Pandemic givers versus prepper givers. A pandemic giver is never prepared. How many of you went to the stores in the last two or three months looking for toilet paper and there was none? How many of you were panicked? How many of you were freaking out like, there's no toilet paper? It doesn't make sense. There's no paper towels. What is going on? People are hoarding. People are, I don't understand it. And the cough, you know, the coffers at the church sometimes are like the shelves. They're bare. And I'm sure as pastor, you, you got to be thinking, um, it doesn't make sense. They have everything right here. The church, uh, if they knew what they had, if they knew um, that everything is right here for them, uh, then the coffers wouldn't be bare like the shelves. But time and time again, we go to the store and we see the same thing. There's nothing. There's no paper towel, no toilet paper. And these situations cause a lot of stress, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of panic, a lot of fights. I mean, people are not acting right these days when you, when you, you know, you see the videos that are going viral. It's like, what were they thinking? These two older women fighting over a, six rolls of toilet paper. Are you kidding me? Who does that? And so it's just kind of, to me, it's kind of comical. It's, it's also scary, but 
these situations will bring stress and will bring fear and will affect your spirit towards others when you don't have stuff because you get desperate and you get uh, anxious and you get fearful. Um, prepper givers are those that have read the material. They read the book. They know what to expect. And they know that at some point there's going to be a situation where you're going to have to lock down where we might be at war, or we might have a nuclear attack, or we might have some sort of pandemic, whatever it might be, but I want to be prepared. And so they do everything that's necessary to get ready for it. They stock up, they buy everything. Not one time during the pandemic did I ever worry about toilet paper, paper towels. I was kind of taken back that there was never any on the shelves, but I wasn't worried because at home, I had more than enough. I had, we stock up on a regular basis. We have prepared for it. Um, and as a result, we live in peace. We don't live in fear. We didn't fear not having toilet paper. We didn't fear not having paper towels. And, and because of that, our preparation prior to, we would go to the store and only be able to get one can of corn or one can of beans. We went ahead and bought it, even though it was a minimum. Not that we needed it, but because we just wanted to replenish what we were using. But we had more than enough. We've been very blessed and I've been very thankful. Um, with your faithfulness, God allows the windows of heaven to open up. And he'll pour out a blessing on you that you can't even contain. More than you can imagine. When you have prepared and you have been faithful and God has blessed you, you're able to help others. And I want to be able to help others. I've always had a heart for giving. I've always had a heart to help people. I hope you too. But it wasn't something that it came naturally. I had to pray for it. I wanted to be a giver. But I knew God had to change my heart and make me into a giver. And make me into someone who wanted to help others. And I was the guy that would drive by every person on the corner. Now I look and I ask God for discernment. God, is this someone that you want me to give to? Is this someone you want me to help? And we have helped many people. And I'm not here to, to pat myself on the back, but I'm here to tell you that I've been on both sides. I've been the non-giver and I've been the giver. And I can tell you, it's much better being a giver. And life is better. It's more peaceful. It's less stressful. And God wants us to be preppers when it comes to giving. Be prepared. Be faithful. And as a result, you're storing up. You are putting treasures in heaven. And you're allowing the heavens to open up on your life, on your marriage, on your kids, on your house, on your family. Everything is going to open up for you because you have followed the book when it comes to being faithful. Man, I can tell you during this pandemic, when there, I'm in real estate or mortgage business, which is associated with real estate. And I can tell you where rates have been all over the board, up and down, crazy cancellation of loan types. Uh, it's unprecedented what's going on in the market. And I can tell you I'm at my busiest I've ever been. Is it because I'm a great lender? No. Everything I do, I give credit to God because he's made me who I am. And He, I've allowed him to guide me and direct me in my business and in what I do. And I give him all the credit because I know tomorrow I can all be taken away. He made me who I am so that I can help others. And so if you will go about your job and about your life and recognize that who you are and what you know and what you understand, sure, you're putting in the labor, you're putting in the work, and you're putting in uh, what goes along with faith because faith without works is dead. You're putting in the work, but God gave you the ability to work. Don't ever forget that. God made you able to work so that you can provide for your family, give to the kingdom of God, and be faithful to the house of God. So go out there. I encourage you. I, I challenge you to try the Lord. It's great. It, the, the rewards are innumerable and infinitesimal. And he will bless you beyond measure. He will bless your marriage. He will bless your children. He will, he will fill them with the Holy Ghost. He, there's so many things that he will do in your life when you give of your time and your talent and your treasure. Don't hold back on God. And he won't hold back on you. God bless you and... I look forward to seeing you again on May 17th. Share um, 
invite people, get people out there, bring them in so that his house can be full. And I guarantee you, God's going to turn around and bless you because of your faithfulness. God bless.